Well, hi guys, so welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today I'm bringing you my second video for January. So January is, as you know, sponsored and put together by Sutton's Days. Okay, so um, she's been doing this collaboration for years and I'm always thankful that I am invited to participate in this canning collaboration for the month of January. So this is January, 2023, and we have awesome stuff in store for you. So every day of the month, you will be getting a video from the list of YouTube creators down below. There's a link to a Sutton's Days link. It goes right to her website. It shows you the calendar as well as all the channels that are involved. And so click that link. It's easy to get to and you can go over there and check it all out. Uh, there, I believe there's 15 of us something like that. And um, there's been some really good, good recipes, stuff I've not seen before, stuff I have seen before. I love all of them. And so we've also gotten quite a bit of knowledge out of it, even stuff that you may not have known about. So every time I watch a canning video, I always take something away from it. So in this, um, in this video, I'm going to be doing, as you see in the title, my version of canned Salisbury steak and or Quebec meatballs, meat patties. So you can do these in meatball form. That's the original recipe is they did it in meatballs, but I've done it in patties. And let me just tell you, my ex-husband would literally clean me out. I'd make eight jars of it and I did it in pint and a half jars. Every time he went on a hunting trip or he went out of town or he wanted to be the big hero, he would make Salisbury steak and mac and cheese and using the Quebec um, meat patties that I made in beef broth. And you just add onions and like freeze dried onions and mushrooms from Thrive and you have thickened that broth and you have a Salisbury steak. It is so good. So you need a pork butt. Um, oh, and let me, don't let me, uh, don't let me forget. So the prizes that are involved with this January 2023 are amazing. As always, Lisa always gives away a 23 quart um, Presto canner. That is a canner that you can do seven quarts in or you can double stack 18 pints, 18 or 19, depending on if you're using wide mouth or regular mouth. Okay, uh, and Four Jars, who is always our sponsor for January since last year, they came through with uh, three prizes. They have an all-American 921. So uh, uh, it also is a double stack canner for pints and or seven quarts. So the 921 is an amazing canner. I believe that now it's upwards of $400 um, or over $400. Um, that's the price tag on that. I have that and she's the Cadillac for, for me. So I am super excited that they have, they're sponsoring that with 200 jar lids. So a hundred of each, the regular mouth and the wide mouth. That's prize number one. Prize number two is a gift basket and um, a Visa card, $50 Visa card. And I believe the third prize is the same, another gift basket and a Visa card. So this is, it's epic. So go to all the videos, leave a comment that puts you in for the drawing. So Lisa at the end of the month will do a random picker. She's going to pick a date off the calendar. And then once she has that date, whoever's video lands on that date is who the random picker is going to be picking the prize winner from. So she's going to be doing that live on, um, I believe it's going to be on Monday Night Live. I'm not sure. She's going to do it on a live video. So at the end of the month. And yes, okay, so this is my second one. If you didn't see the first video I did, I did um, herbed Cornish came hens and they are divine. I made soup with them and I can't wait to make the soup again. Only this time per viewer um, suggestion to use wild rice. And I just didn't happen to have any, so I'm definitely gonna purchase some wild rice and add that. But the jasmine rice with the herbed meat was so good and I absolutely enjoyed every bite of it. All right, so I have this pork butt. It's just under seven pounds, but this is a bone-in. The, the recipe, I believe you need four and a half pounds, but we're gonna, we're gonna make it work. 
Um, I'm gonna get to uh, getting this off the bone and into sizable pieces to go down into my meat grinder. This is my Tupperware meat grinder. Um, I, I brought out my KitchenAid, but I couldn't find the uh, blade and die attachment. I could find this one, but I couldn't find the KitchenAid one. So Amazon, here I come. I did order new blades. So I'll, I'll leave a link to, my Tupperware link's always down below, but I'll leave a link to KitchenAid, a KitchenAid um, grinder attachment kit and or blades. Um, so if you guys have a KitchenAid, it's a little workhorse when it comes to grinding meat. I'm a little bit disappointed because I did get it out and cleaned it all up and I was ready to go and then I can't find the blades, even though all of that stuff was in a basket. So enough being said, I'm gonna bring you in. I'm gonna go grab my lids. I've got my canner. Now I'm doing um, a small batch, basically. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it for one person by themselves or two people. Um, because a lot of us, there's just one in the household or two. And so this way you're not canning these large quarts of stuff or I don't need one and a half pint jars anymore. Um, so a pint jar is plenty. And I've also got the little squatty half pints that I'm gonna do one patty. So it'll be a one serving deal. So if I just want to keep my calories at a minimum, I can do one patty and um, then the rest broth, thicken that broth with some cornstarch, some, put some onions and mushrooms in there. And I have to I throw it over some mashed potatoes or some pasta or some rice, whatever you, whatever your heart desires or have it by itself next to a side of mac and cheese. All right. So anyhow, let's get to grinding some meat and we'll get on this video for January, 2023. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start by breaking down this piece of meat. And you need pieces that are gonna go into the grinder. This is a Rada um, knife. This is a slicing. I love this thing, it's so sharp. You use your Rada sharpener. And I'm just gonna put these chunks of meat over here. We're gonna go through till we hit a bone. Mm -hmm. And you actually, <clears throat> you can take these pork butts and make these into like country ribs. Um, I know Lisa or her and Phil do that over on her channel at Sutton's Days. Okay, I hit a bone, so I'm going to go around that as best I can. Go ahead and get that meat away from there. And this goes pretty fast. It's not hard, and this saves you a ton of money because if you were to buy already ground pork, you're going to pay upwards of $5 a pound. I paid 99 cents a pound for this particular pork butt. So I already had it in the freezer. I knew I needed to do, I wanted to do something that I hadn't done for you guys in a really long time on my channel or that I hadn't ever done before. And I've done this recipe for you, but it's probably been eight years since I put this out for you. So every time you do something, you're gonna be a little bit different in your presentation and everything. So. Don't be afraid to watch somebody's video and then go back maybe and watch the first one and see, you know, I originally got this idea from a channel. <clears throat> um, she no longer posts or she doesn't post very often. Let's just put it that way. Um, I'm still working and she introduced this. This is a Bernardin recipe. So the, the Quebec meatballs is um, what you would look up on the Bernardin website. I'm gonna leave the recipe though um, at the end of this video or in the description, I will leave you um, the recipe and you can make this as well. The texture of these, it's, it's soft like a Salisbury steak should be, but it is so good. It's like, it's just a favorite. Now, getting down to the nitty gritty. Are you gonna leave all the fat in there? If there's a big thick piece of fat, I might cut that off, but you do want a fair amount of fat like this, that fat cap, I'm gonna cut this off because that's a little hard to get through that little grinder because of the skin that's still on there. There's still a little layer of skin there. So I'll take that off. Um, maybe off of this one too. But as far as interior marbling, no, don't take any of, don't try to take any of that off. Just this, 
that might have that skin kind of texture still attached. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're gonna get the rest of this off the bone. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. And then I'm gonna be chomping at the bit to show you um, in another video of how to use it and how it comes out. You're gonna love it. So now I can, um, I'm gonna whittle away on this, but you could actually make some pork stock with this bone and the meat that's left on here. Save these bones up, put them back in the freezer, save them up until you have four or five of these off of different pork butts and you can make the most amazing pork stock um, to use in recipes and can up. Stock is one of those things that we should be doing ourselves anyway. I think it's, it's using all of what we have resource wise. So see, there's that bone done. And that bone, that probably weighs a pound. Um, so we're gonna say a pound to a pound and a half of waste out of that, which is not bad. <clears throat> and see how sharp that knife has stayed through this whole process. Not too shabby. Okay, so like this fat here doesn't have that skin feel to it attached. I'm gonna leave it alone. Maybe, maybe one little spot here. There we go. Okay, now we're ready to put this through the grinder. Let me uh, clean up this cutting board and get that all sanitized again. And I'll bring the grinder over and get you a different angle and we'll get to grinding. All right, so I'm gonna start with this meat. And you want the meat as cold as you can possibly get it. Um, this is pretty cold. I'm hoping that it's cold enough for this to go through. And you just start running it through. It's gonna take some elbow grease, but look at, it's getting through all the fat, it's getting through everything. There's not a lot of tough gristle like what you might find in uh, beef in a pork butt, so I'm not, I'm not quite as concerned. I would have loved to have done the KitchenAid and let the KitchenAid do the work, but hey, what do you do? I have to order on Amazon new blades, but I, I want to get this video out on time, so here we are. And this might be a prep-a-day can-a-day because it's already getting late in the afternoon. <clears throat> I might end up having to prep, get all the meat done today and spiced and let all the spices marry and then come back tomorrow and can it for you. My jars have been washed. The canner is clean and ready to go. And this piece has a lot of fat. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all ground up. I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and spice the meat. I'm gonna use all of this. It's over the four, four and a half pounds or 4.4 pounds that that calls for. So I'm gonna use a little bit of extra of everything except for the cinnamon. I won't use extra cinnamon. <clears throat> so this calls for to spice this meat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a prep a day, can a day kind of a thing where I get everything prepped today and because of how late it's getting in the day, I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to actually can it up, but it'll all be on this video together for you. So it, it calls for um, two onions, not direct measurements. These were onions out of my garden. So I did a, about uh, three cups of onions. And I did a fine chop on this with the Vidalia chopper. So they're all about the same size. I didn't wanna have them, mm, they smell so good. And these were yellow onions. You can use white onion, yellow onion, it really doesn't matter. All right, um, garlic, now this one, it calls, says that this is optional, but it's not optional with me. You definitely need garlic, and I did four cloves. It calls for two cloves of crushed garlic, but because we like it, or I like it garlicky, um, the cloves varied in size, so it equates 
two large cloves of garlic, or, and then some for the extra that I have. Okay, now we're gonna get to the dried parsley. And this is also parsley from my garden. And it's calling for two tablespoons of dried parsley. I'm gonna put three only because I usually use extra. Um, it's not gonna take over. It won't change the canning process one little bit. Let's do a little bit extra. I love parsley in there. Okay. And clove. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go overboard with the clove because you can you can actually it calls for a teaspoon and a quarter of right a teaspoon and a quarter of ground clove. So we're gonna do that teaspoon and a quarter and that's about it. And whoo, that's uh, maybe a smidge more. Okay, smidge for the extra, that's it. Clove's really strong, but trust me when I tell you, you need the clove and the cinnamon in this recipe. That's what makes it unique. That's what makes it taste so good. Calls for a teaspoon of cinnamon. And so I'm gonna go ahead Give a teaspoon. I'm not gonna over, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do more cinnamon because I don't want it overpowering. It also calls for mace, but I've never put mace in there before. Um, I, I don't have any on hand, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, we do need dry mustard. So let me grab that really quick. Because everybody loves dry mustard and some pepper. So the dry mustard is two teaspoons of dry mustard. So we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna give you two heaping teaspoons of dry mustard because I don't think you can do too much of that. And now salt and pepper. And uh, that is, calls for a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna do only because I love black pepper just to almost two, and we're gonna do salt, a teaspoon and a half. I don't wanna overdo on the salt, okay? Because there's gonna be salt in the broth that I make for this, and I'll make the broth tomorrow. So that's it for the mixture that goes in this meat. So we're gonna go ahead and get in here with our hands, and I'm using a glove because I, I don't wanna get this up under my, my nails and you know, it's just easier to clean up. So you're literally gonna get this all worked into the meat. And then I'm gonna form them tomorrow. I'm gonna let this marinate and with all this good stuff overnight. I'll give it another mix in tomorrow and we will be ready to make these into patties. They will have to get browned off. Now you can brown them off on the grill, you can brown them off in a skillet, on the griddle. You, any way you wanna brown this off, go ahead, feel free. And you're gonna brown this off and then we'll um, form the patties, brown them off, and then we'll get them jarred up. And this is gonna be absolutely wonderful. And if I have extra, I'm just going to put this back in the freezer the way it is and on the next uh, next time I get pork butt on sale or the next time I, I need to do this, I'll already have the mixture prepped or part of it anyway, right? Or I can just make patties for dinner without having to, and you do really wanna make sure this gets mixed very well. If you have a meat mixture or a meat mixer, now's the time to run that through. I don't have one of those. I used to, but I don't anymore. I don't deal with enough, you know, wild game anymore to worry about it. Maybe someday. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. Ooh, okay. I'm super excited about this. Okay, I actually would like to see a little more parsley in there. And I, I mean, I can fry off a piece of this and um, see if, if I've got the correct ratio of everything, but I think it's fine. There was only about um, probably 
two and a half or two pounds more, maybe not even two pounds, about a pound and a half more meat than the recipe calls for. So I think we'll be okay. But mm, it smells wonderful. Okay. Yeah, I want a little bit more parsley going through there. So I'm going to grab this jar. And literally, like I said, it's not going to change the outcome of the canning at all. So none of, none of the ingredients in here is going to change how this comes out or how long you have to can it or anything. It's all um, totally safe for canning because we're going to be canning this in pint jars and half pint jars. But the pint jar timing is 75 minutes once we vent and it comes up to pressure. All right, I'm just gonna continue this. I'm gonna get this all uh, mixed together and then I'm going to pop, put some saran over the top of this, pop it in the fridge overnight, come back tomorrow and we're gonna can it up. And so, do you have to leave it in the fridge like this? No, you could brown it right now, get it all browned up and can it up today but I just, I'm running out of time and I have a ton more of other things to do today. So, okay, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how well it's mixed. It smells fantastic. It smells wonderful. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Okay guys, so it's the next day. It's actually just afternoon here and I'm getting ready to form my meat patties, my Quebec meat patties or Salisbury steak in a jar. I'm super excited. All my jars are washed. I have five wide mouth and you want a wide mouth jar. This is one of the only times I say you have to have a wide mouth. Otherwise I will every time use a regular mouth jar. I just think they're prettier on the shelf. I don't know why. And these are my tuna jars. This is what I can tuna and salmon in, but I have five of these as well. I'm gonna use the small 10.1 all American canner and I can double stack in there with the short squatty pints on half pints on top the pints on the bottom so this is gonna be a single serving one patty and some broth right okay so <clears throat> or you can make them thinner patties I just don't I just don't I if I can get two in there I'll do two but for real um, we're gonna get these patties done I'm heating up the trayer instead of doing them in the oven and having all the dirty dishes and all that i'm gonna save myself some dishes and do the um do the patties in there so i've got about two and a half quarts of water in this saucepan right here and i'm gonna go ahead and add my better than bouillon i started to add it and i thought well you know what i better do this on camera so i'm gonna add about oh healthy <laughs> there's a tablespoon Let's do, let's do, I don't know, about a two, two tablespoons ought to do it. And then, and that, with what was already in there. And then the recipe calls for, and this is optional, but I'm gonna add it, a cup of red wine. It says up to a cup. And this is a Merlot, so we're gonna add one cup of that, and we'll have, We'll have some to have with dinner, right? Or before dinner. All right. Get my cork back on and move this out of the way. And now I'm gonna get this on the stove and we'll get this heating up, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a while before I need this because this will be hot, the hot broth going over the um, the hot patties but I've got to form these patties all up and cook them off on the trigger. Now they do not have to be cooked all the way through. Two thirds of the way through is plenty, but I really do, I, I really do want most of it cooked. Um, and then the, the canning process is going to cook the rest. Okay, so let's put this over on the stew and we'll get that warming up and put that away. And let me bring it in close and I'll show you how to make those patties. Okay, I got all the patties done up and there's still enough probably for another whole canning session or close to it. So I'm gonna make a couple patties for myself for tonight and um, I'll probably put them out on the grill as well. And I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger 
and make a mushroom and onion gravy to go over it. Oh, I can't wait. Anyways, and the rest is going in the freezer for the next go round. This is all going out to be seared off on the Traeger. Doesn't have to be fully cooked, but the Traeger is preheated at 450 degrees. So you could do this on your Weber, any kind of grill outside and save the mess, put the mess outside. Anyways, this will drip down on the, into the drip pan and ah, easy peasy cleanup. Okay, I'll be back when I'm loading up jars. Okay, so these were out on the grill for oh, quite a while. Um, and they do shrink, but it's okay. We're gonna put these right down in the jar. Oh, look at that. And then there's plenty of room for gravy. And they hold together pretty well, so I want four in each of the pint jars. You could probably actually get five in there, but you're pushing it. So <clears throat> once I get a couple of jars filled here, I will show you what we're gonna do next. And these smell so good. So I made up a couple patties out of what's left over and I put them out there on the grill. While the grill is hot and going, I wanted to make sure I, I go ahead and get that before it cools down. I'm just gonna utilize my grill space and get those cooked off as well for dinner. So there won't be much to go in the freezer. Let's get these. And I did just enough patties for four in each jar and three or two in each of the single servings. So for those of you, again, that maybe live by yourself or there's just two of you and you're not very big eaters, or maybe this is something you wanna take for lunch and um, you don't necessarily need the gravy, you have an option. Okay, one more of the pint jars. I'm gonna do all the pints first. I am going to double stack and how am I gonna do that? I, I have a, um, a rack that I made out of foil. Hopefully I made it and did enough. Okay, two, four. Oh, I might not have. <clears throat> I only did enough for um, three of those jars. That's okay. We're gonna stick. We're gonna stick with the plan. That is the plan. I'm not gonna make put any more out there on on the. I thought I did enough for all five jars. But that's okay. Okay, so now we're we have to get this out of the way for a second. I'll move this over here until I'm ready for that. And I've got my paper towel with vinegar on it. So can you see, can you see? And my debubbler is MIA. I'm not sure where it is, but I do have my water that I heated up on the stove. Um, Four jars says to put hot water, simmer them. And so I just put boiling water over the top and let them steep with that. There you go. Perfect. And I do, oh, there's my debubbler, right with my other tools. <laughs> anyway, so I, I took a chopstick out just in case. You, won't, you don't wanna be poking around too much with these, so here. Let's do, um, let's do these over here. And that way you can see, can you see okay? You're gonna put that delicious broth and trust me when I tell you it's delicious. Up to an inch of headspace. And literally, there's, that's perfect. You're, you're gonna try to debubble if you will. You're just gonna kind of move this around just like that. And if you lose any of that headspace, go ahead and add a little bit more. But my mouth is watering because I know how good this is. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna get a lid, four jars for the win here. One, four jars lid. And I've got my handy dandy rings right here. And we're doing fingertip tight Make sure you got it centered. Just it, your ring is a tool to keep that lid in place during the canning process. You want it loose enough that it can vent and push out the air because this food will expand 
and the liquid will expand. That's why that inch of headspace is so important. So uh, now this girl is going in the canner to wait for the other ones. Oh, yum. Okay. And my canner is hot and ready. It's not, um, it's at about 180 degrees. So hot jars, hot liquid, hot canner, hot, everything's hot. Okay. Take that the bubble tool, kind of just let those patties kind of submerge themselves. Oh my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> And here we go, one more. My lid, even though I separated these, they stuck together. A little bit of suction going on there. Center your lid, and the four jars lids have a nice lip on them, so they, uh, there you go. In the canner it goes for the next go round. And I will continue on. Now, if I was doing regular mouth jars, like with meatballs or something like that, I would be able to fit seven in my little canner, but because these are all wide mouth, five jars, five to six is what's gonna fit. And deep bubble, deep bubble. Okay, wipe the rim, doo -doo -doo. and get your uh, lid. And there you go. If you are not sure what an inch of headspace is, if you get one of these tools and put it on the edge, that is an inch of headspace. They're measured off in quarter inch increments. Super important, it's super important. Okay, I'll be back when I get these. Okay, so I got five jars in the canner, five pint jars, and these will, and there'll be five half pint jars. Again, it's an inch of headspace for each jar. And I'm, I'm super excited about having a single serving when I don't wanna heat up too much at once, but I want just enough. And portion control, portion control. And I'm gonna have enough broth to make my gravy for tonight. Oh, perfect. It couldn't have come out more perfect. Okay. An inch of headspace on all of these. And there we go. Okay. I'm gonna save the rest of this broth for my gravy and put this, these utensils in the sink and off we go to the races. Oh my gosh, are you excited? This is so exciting. I love canuary, but I actually, I've been wanting to do this recipe for a long time and I just, I hadn't, I just hadn't done it. It's a, it is a, a little bit of a laborious process, but oh, so worth it. So in between the jars, you never wanna put jars on top of jars in the canner. Um, I don't have an extra rack, so what I did was I put a, I took a pie plate an aluminum pie plate, let me just show you. And I cut it down flat. And that's what I used to put a buffer in between my jars. So these can go on top and that's how I do that. So wipe the rims of these and wipe the rims and perfect. Get a lid. And on each one, there you go. I literally, I don't know why I had extra jars out, but I did, and that's, I calculated just perfect for five and five. Okay, so I think I'm gonna make this recipe and do the meatball version, um, just so I have those on the shelf as well. And I think when I do that, I'm gonna mix pork and beef together with that same spice seasoning. 
it should be really, really good. Okay, one more jar here, and we're ready to put our canning lid on. Okay, guys, are you ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you up here so I can get that lid. Okay, so the All-American Canner, see? See, so nothing is holding, it, it, it's not gonna impede any of the canning process. And you always, on the All-American, just in case you win that All-American canner, you do um, your thumb screws opposites of each other. That levels off your lid and keeps it, because the lid has to kind of level up. And then once you've got them all on there, then you can start cranking it down. And this, this is, that's exactly what holds your canner lid on. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so I've got this on low. I'm gonna turn it up about midway. We'll let this come up and it will vent a steady stream of steam once that starts happening. And they always face that away from your kitchen cabinets or your microwave. Once that steam starts spewing out of there like a freight train, you're gonna go ahead and time that for 10 full minutes. That's part of the canning process. That's part of the timing. You cannot skip that step. So we're gonna let this come up and get the steaming away. That replaces all that air inside the canner. It equalizes the temperature. And because you literally, the top jars are being steamed. They are not in a boiling water bath, right? So that the purpose of that, you have to have X amount of space for that steam in your canner for it to do its job efficiently. So getting all the air pushed out and replacing that with hot steam, then it's time to put the weight on. And for my altitude, it's 10 pounds. So check your altitude and the guidelines through the National Center for Home Food Preservation to see what altitude and what pressure you should be at. So 10 pounds of pressure for me. And then once that weight starts jiggling, here's our little weight. Um, that means once it starts jiggling and that means it's releasing that pressure because it has hit 10 pounds inside the canner. So it's got to release it and then it'll shut down a little bit and then it'll release it. So you really want this to jiggle a minimum of a couple times a minute, but mine always goes more than that. So that's how that goes. And once that starts happening, we're going to time this for 75 minutes, even the smaller jars. It doesn't matter, it's 75 minutes for pints. It would be 90 minutes if we were doing quarts. And I would like to do, I think I would like to do some quarts if I'm gonna do the meatballs, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Although I really do enjoy having smaller, smaller batches of stuff. I tend to use it better. All right, we'll be back when this is all doing its thing. I'll bring you back and show you parts and pieces, okay. All right, so the moment of truth. This, you can see the lid's been sitting like this. All the steam has come out of the canner. I mean, it's still hot, but I, I feel like the zone of safety as far as um, whether it's gonna siphon or not on me might be gone. Hopefully it's gone. So the top rack, ooh, look at there. And it's, I know it's hard to see in this light. I apologize. I will try to lighten this up for you, but it, yeah, it looks amazing, amazing. Okay, two patties and these little squatty pints. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. They smell good. They, uh, well, you know, you're always gonna have some kind of smells coming out of a canner. So five of these and five of the other. So again, I put that that um, flattened out pie, pl pie plate, disposable, you know, aluminum pie plate. They're inexpensive. If you don't have something to buffer, you know, between the jars, there you go. Okay. Now here's the, oh yeah, the water is clear. So here's the jars with four patties in each jar. That broth is thick, or not thick, but dark and rich. And it's still boiling in the jars, seriously. So um, we, we still have, 
lots of activity going on. This is super hot, but I'll get a good daylight picture for you. Um, so you get to see what they look like in better lighting because you know, a canning session like this, oh yeah, it's boiling. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see that boiling away. Um, a canning session like this, 75 minutes is an hour and 15 minutes, but you have cool down. That's usually about an hour. You have uh, heating up. That's at least a half hour. The process of filling the jars, all of this factors in. So I've got 10 meals. These are single serving here, but I have 10 meals for myself um, and or possibly uh, right here are 10 meals for myself and then another. So really and truly 15 meals for me. Or if I'm making this to share, it's all good. So that is, let's let's show you the can or water. No, no, no. Clear, super awesome. I'm so glad that you came along and are joining me for January. And thank you, Lisa, again, and four jars. Four jars for the win. We are going to hear all the pops. They don't ping, they like pop. And even when you open a jar, they pop. So <laughs> I can't wait to hear the pop. And again, guys, watch all the videos, subscribe to all the channels, show them some love, leave a comment, and enter for your chance to win. And happy January, guys. Mm -hmm. Bye. Can you see that? That's after all that time of sitting and letting everything rest. So all that liquid is that catalyst that literally makes that canning session amazing. All right, I'll be back when I do a recipe for you. <laughs> Bye again.